Verse number 11 says, chapter 13 of the Revelation, verse number 11, and I beheld another beast. Let's read that together, come on. Coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a, a dragon. Now, who does this lamb-like beast represent? We know this, who? This is the United States of America in Bible prophecy. And what we're going to do today is continue our series, our three-part series that we began on last Sabbath. Now, look with me at verse number 12. The Bible tells us that coming to America and then around the world, that God's people are going to be forced to worship on Sunday or else they will be persecuted. Verse number 12 says, And he exerciseth all the power, this is in America now, all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So who is this first beast that once received a deadly wound and the Bible says that wound will one day be healed? This is the papacy, the first beast. We confirm that looking at verse 1 through verse number 10 of Revelation chapter 13. Now how does the first beast, how does the papacy, what day does the papacy call the day of the Lord? God's Sabbath, God's day of worship. What day does the papacy worship on? And are the churches are now following the man-made tradition and day of worship from the Roman Catholic Church. It is Sunday. Is Sunday God's day of worship? Is Sunday God's Sabbath? Is Sunday the day of the Lord? Go back to verse number 12. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the whom? The first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Skip on down to verse number 15 with me. The Bible now tells us that God's commandment keeping people who refuse to honor Sunday, who refuse to worship falsely, that they are going to be persecuted. They will not be able to buy or sell. Friends, even though some of us have read this and know this, I'm going to re-emphasize this point. Verse number 15 says, are we there? It says, and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast. Now the image of the beast, speaking about America, the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be what? Should be killed. Is persecution coming for God's commandment keeping people? Verse number 17, verse 16, he calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a what? A mark in their forehead, right hand, in their forehead, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that receive what? The mark. So the Bible is telling us beginning in America and then around the world, God's commandment keeping people are going to be prohibited from buying and selling unless they accept and worship falsely, especially honoring Sunday as the day of worship. Is that clear? But many people say, Pastor, the idea that, that the United States of America will prohibit God's people from buying and selling except they worship on Sunday, worship falsely. That will never take place. But friends, remember this fact, that the United States of America is already putting economic sanctions, prohibiting nations, who friends? Nations from buying and selling, nations from trading with other nations because they refuse to accept the policies of the United States of America. Question, has the, United States, has the U.S. placed a financial sanction upon Russia? Listen what this says. Listen, friends. This is the Guardian. It says, bottom paragraph, it says, it says at the same time. Russian banks are frozen out of Western capital markets. Why? 
as a result of the European Union and whom? The United States applying what? Sanctions over Russia's actions in Ukraine. Listen what this says. This is uh, September 18, 2015, Religion News Service. It says Obama does what? Eases embargo on which country? On Cuba, just before Pope Francis visits the island. America placed a financial sanction embargo. Cuba could not buy and sell with the nations that are in harmony with the United States. America placed sanctions on Cuba. Cuba could not trade with various nations. So what then would happen to the people in Cuba? Would they suffer? Would the, would, will the, would the Cuban economy go downward? Not prospering. So think now, friends, since the United States of America has caused and has been causing nations not to be able to buy or sell except those nations, accept her policies, why doubt then? Why doubt the prophecy that very, very soon God's commandment keeping people will not be able to what? Buy or wake up, friends. Go back with me to verse number 12. It says, and he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him. That's the papacy. This will come to America and cause it the earth and them which dwell therein. To what, friends? To worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Now, we saw last week to worship the first beast, to worship the Pope of Rome. To worship the Pope means to admire the Pope to follow the Pope, to worship on Sunday, to partake of the Eucharist at Mass. Is that clear so far? So what will cause the people in America to worship the papacy, admire the Pope of Rome, follow the Pope of Rome? The Bible says three things will take place. Number one, great wonders will take place in America. Now, friends, you're not writing. Take your notes. Please. Some of you are like, okay, Pastor. No, no, take your notes. Amen. Great what? Great wonders. Write that down. And number two, fire will fall from heaven. What, friends? Fire will fall from heaven. And number three, great miracles will be wrought in America firstly and then around the world. Let's confirm that. These things will cause the people in America and then around the world to worship the first beast, to revere, pay homage, admire, and follow the policies of the Roman pontiff, even Pope Francis. Go back to verse 12. Bible says, he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him and cause it the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Verse 13, watch now. And he doeth what? There it is. And he doeth great wonders so that he maketh what? What's number two? Fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, number three now, and deceive at them that dwell on the earth by the means of those what? So what are those three things that will cause the people in America and then around the world to worship the first beast and then to make an image to the papacy? What three things? Great wonders will be wrought. What's number two? Fire will fall from heaven and akin to the great wonders. wonders. What's number three? Great miracles will be wrought. So now comes the question, which primary entity will be working great wonders, miracles in America and around the world to cause the people to revere, admire the Pope of Rome and to make an image to the papacy. Who is this primary entity? Write this down. It is the papacy and her false prophets. Who, friends? The papacy and the false prophet. Let's confirm that. Look with me at verse number 13. We're studying God's word here. Verse number 13, are we there? Look at verse 13. It says, he doeth great, underscore those two words, great wonders, so that, listen now, listen carefully, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. Pause right there for a minute. 
Where in the Bible, especially in the Old Testament, do we find men, listen carefully before you answer, do we find men attempting to bring down fire from heaven on the earth in the context of worship? Where do we find that? On Mount Carmel. Hold your place in chapter 13 of Revelation. That's how we study our Bibles, comparing scripture to scripture. Go now with me to 1 Kings chapter 18. Where are we going to, my friends? 1 Kings chapter 18. Now let's talk Bible students. Come on, let's talk. Bible students, safe to serve. Let's talk now. So who was it that was attempting to bring fire down from heaven on Mount Carmel in the context of worship? Who was this? Listen now, amen. Put it down there. It was, it were the prophets of Baal, the prophets of the grove. And both the prophets of Baal and the prophets of the groves, they were all connected to Jezebel because they ate from Jezebel's uh, table. So now it was, uh, the, it was Jezebel and her prophets who attempted to bring fire down from heaven in the sight of the people, in the sight of men, in the context of worship. So who will attempt to bring fire down in these last days? In America. To cause the people now to worship the first beast. To make an image to the papacy. To admire and to follow the Pope of Rome. It is the papacy and her false prophets. Go with me. 1 Kings chapter 18. Are we ready my friends? You all said that you wanted to study. So let's study. 1 Kings chapter 18. Are we there? Now, write this down. It's also on your sermon notes. That what God prohibited or hindered in the Old Testament as Baal prophets, Jezebel's prophets, were trying to bring fire down, what God hindered in the Old Testament, he is going to allow in these last days. Why will he do it? We'll get to that. Verse number 19 of 1 Kings 18. It says, and therefore... This is the prophet Elijah speaking. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel and the prophets of whom? Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400, which eat where? At Jezebel's table, verse 20, they met on Mount Carmel. And verse 21, now Elijah said, how long halt ye? Between two opinions, if the Lord be God, what? Follow him. But if Baal, then what? Follow him. Verse number 23. Skip on down to verse 24. It says, And call ye on the name, on the name of your gods, and I will call on the name of the Lord. Listen now. And the God that answereth by fire, let him be what? God and was Jezebel's prophets, the prophets of Baal and the prophets of the grove, trying to bring fire down from heaven to deceive the people that Baal was God. Do you see it, my friends? Do you see that? Is that clear? So now, what system of worship was connected to Baal worship? Because we want to know what Baal worship represents today. What system of worship was connected to Baal worship? It was sun worship. Right down beside verse 24 or verse 21, whichever. Verse 21, put beside verse 21 where the word Baal is. Uh, write down 2 Kings. What did I say? 2 Kings chapter 23 and verse number 5. Bible tells us uh, that Baal worship Baal worship is connected to nature worship, astrology, and the sun is listed first, not by accident, in verse 5. And the sun has always been, watch this carefully, the chief god for the pagans. And constant, all these heathens, the Roman Catholic Church is filled with paganism. He then worshiped, and that is one reason why Constantine and the popes of Rome now declared that Sunday, the worship of the sun, is the day of worship. Sunday worship, it's Baal worship. If that's clear, say amen. So now, who does Jezebel represent in these last days? Who, my friends? 
it was, Be it was Jezebel and her prophets that attempted to bring fire down to lead people into false worship. So who does Jezebel represent in these last days? Jezebel represents the papacy. Look with me at 1 Kings. 1 Kings chapter 21. Now, the Jezebel, the Jezebel marry a king. Who was that king? Ahab. The Jezebel control and dictate Ahab. The Jezebel lead Ahab into false worship. Write down 1 Kings chapter, just put it on your nose. 1 Kings chapter 16. Verse number 31 through verse 33, Jezebel led the king into false worship. And 1 Kings 21 now, 1 Kings 21, verse 24 and verse 25. Bible says Jezebel is the one that controlled and led Ahab into false worship. Now, which church entity today is now dictating and controlling the civil leaders of the various nations. Which church entity is this? It is Roman Catholicism. It is Popery. Catholic News Service says, uh, September 4, 2014 headline. It says, uh, Pope Francis. Let's read that. Is the what, friends? It says, Pope Francis is the only leader respected enough to what? To end today's wars. And here we have Vatican Radio from Ban Ki-moon, the UN Secretary General saying that Pope Francis is the only one who can lead out in the various nations. Just as ancient Jezebel so Roman Catholicism, so Popery, so the papacy. Go back to 1 Kings chapter 18. Question for you now, save to serve. Watch this carefully now. Did Jezebel, follow me, did Jezebel persecute and kill the prophets of God? Yes. Look at 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 13. 1 Kings 18, verse 13. Was it not told, my Lord, what I did when Jezebel did what? Slew the prophets of the Lord. So which church entity? in these last days is known throughout history to have persecuted, butchered, murdered, martyred the Christians throughout the ages. Specifically from A.D. 538 to A.D. 1798, it is the papacy CNN News. March 12, 2000, it says Pope John Paul II makes on Unprecedented apology for sins of Catholic Church, seeking repentance for sins that may have been done, may have been committed over the what? Past 2,000 years in the name of the church. Those sins entailed the crusades to the Inquisition. Forced conversions? Wait a minute. Who in the Middle East, in Afghanistan, in Iraq, and so on in Syria and, and Libya, who is now forcing people to convert to a certain religion? So-called radical Muslims. I wonder who trained them to do that? That's something else. The sins against women and anti-Jewish acts. It was the first for the church. Go back to 1 Kings chapter 18. So who does Jezebel represent today, friends? Who does Jezebel represent today? Look with me at 1 Kings chapter 18. And the Bible tells us that this is whom Jezebel, it represents, she points to the papacy in these last days of earth's history. Listen to what this says. Question for you. Where was Jezebel when Jezebel was destroyed? Where was she? Go to 2 Kings 9 with me. Huh? Where was she? Oh, my brother. Go to 2 Kings chapter 9. Wonderful. I like when the church is knowledgeable of Bible truth. Do you know, my friend, Jezebel in the Old Testament, Bible tells us that when, that when demise, destruction came to literal Jezebel, do you know where she was? She was at a window. Because uh, customarily, Jezebel would stand at a window and talk to the people. Question for you, which church today has a leader who talks from his window? The Pope of Rome. So who is modern day Jezebel? Second Kings chapter 9, are we there? Look with me. 
Verse number 32. It says, verse 32, 2 Kings 9, And he lifted up his face to the what? The window and said, pardon me, go back to verse 30. Verse 30 says, And when Jehu was come to Jezreel, Jezebel heard of it, and she what? Painted her face. That's why we don't put on mascara and makeup. Lipstick, amen. I shall, oh, oh, amen. And she painted her face and what? Tired her head and looked out at where? At the window. Was she now talking to the people down there? Who, who now does this? Look at the screen. It says papalaudience.org. It says the other opportunity to see the Pope is on a Sunday when? At 12 noon when he is in Rome. He will appear from where? So who is modern day Jezebel? Go with me in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 13. So who does the Bible say will, will, will perform great wonders and miracles to cause the people beginning in America and then around the world to worship the first beast, to revere and admire the Pope and make an image to the beast? The answer is it will be the papacy and her false prophets. If that's clear, say amen. Let's focus now on the papacy right now. Look with me. Do you know, my friends, we're living in a time when Pope Francis is already working miracles so they say look what this says this is huffington post this is uh, march 22nd 2015 what is the headline here it says pope francis credited with performing what miracle at as saint generals blood what liquefies friends that is not the miracle i'm going to focus on Yes, there are going to be miracles working, but go back with me to verse 13. I want us to focus on the 13th chapter of Revelation, verse number 13. It says, and he doeth what? Great wonders. Pause right there. Do you know, my friends, when you compare scripture with scripture, hear me carefully, and you look at the phrase great wonders, Great wonders all throughout scripture means a person does a remarkable deed, a remarkable act, a marvelous action, which causes the people to say, this must be a miracle because nobody else could have done that. Great what? Great wonders. Showing us the great wonders also point to the policies of the Pope of Rome. He is going to be doing marvelous things in America, for Americans, in the world, for the people in the world. And people now are going to say, nobody else could have done and do what Pope Francis is doing. Now we shall admire and worship him. Is that going on right now? Look for yourself right here, friends. This is Time Magazine, June 10, 2015. What is the headline there? The policies of Pope Francis. Can Pope Francis work a what? A Vladimir Putin miracle. Is the Pope now working great wonders to cause people to worship him? Look here. Breitbart News. The issue with the United States and Cuba. What is the headline here? Skip on down. It says, or let's read that. Obama says what? Pope issued personal appeal to me. And Castro on Cuba, it says, bottom section, the White House has what? Credited Pope Francis with being a what? An important catalyst to what, friends? The diplomatic thaw between Cuba and whom? And the United States, RT News says, uh, Obama said. Listen, President Obama's goal of closing the prison in Guantanamo Bay says he has met heavy resistance from lawmakers in Washington. Watch this now. And now the White House is what? Turning to what? A higher authority for help. Who is that? The Vatican, the Vatican my friends. Modern day Jezebel. Is that clear? Now watch. In 1961, what year did I say? In 1961. 
the diplomatic relation between America and Cuba was broken. And do you know what America did to Cuba? She applied economic sanctions on Cuba. And the Cubans began to suffer. But now, guess what Pope Francis is now doing? He's allowing the United States now to lift that embargo, to lift that economic sanction so that the people in Cuba may prosper financially. So who then would those Cubans now begin to worship and admire? It's the Pope of Rome. Nobody else could have done that. Listen to what it says. Skip on down. September 18th, it says, by further easing these what? Sanctions. The U.S. is helping to support whom? The Cuban people, listen carefully, the Cuban people in their effort to achieve what? The political and what? Economic freedom. Listen, where is the Pope right now? Not important, but where is the Pope right now? He's right there in Cuba. Do you know why now, friends? Can you now see why now? To now bring economic freedom to that people. Nobody else could have done that. Is that a great wonder from the Pope? Yes. Who will they now worship? And when those people, Cubans now, can come to America and get a slice of the financial cake, who will they now revere? On what other issue is the Pope working great wonders? As we said last week, is he working great wonders for the people? Doing things nobody else could have done in the era of migrants and refugees? Listen to what it says. It says here, this is Castro. What does he say? Castro says what? Raw Castro. To Pope, he says what? Thanks to you, Mr. Pope. I may come back to what? The church with church. So why is the Pope now in Cuba? What is his purpose? To, oh, friends, to establish Roman Catholicism more forcefully in Cuba. Then wait a minute. Where is he coming next? For what purpose? And Castro said, I'm going to be a part of the Mass. Listen to me carefully. And when people partake of the Eucharist, at Mass, what are they saying by their actions? What does the Pope do with the bread and the wine? He claims he has power, miracle, uh, miraculous power, to turn the literal bread into the body of Jesus. And the literal grape juice, no, it's liquor, into the blood, literal blood of Christ. Is that not the Pope working miracles? And what says Castro now? He says, Raul Castro, Castro to attend what? Papal Cuba masses. Why is the Pope in Cuba right now? Can we make sense of current events? Here comes the migrants and refugees. It says uh, the Sydney morning. Oh, praise God. God is working. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, it's a wonderful thing when we can understand prophecy based on your word current events. Help us not to fall asleep, dear God. Help us to be found watchful and prayerful in these closing scenes of earth's history because very, very soon the mark of the beast is going to be enforced and we need to be prepared physically, mentally, and spiritually. Help us, dear God, even our children. In Christ's name we pray. Listen to what it says here, friends. It says just yesterday, this says, Vatican takes in what? First Syrian refugee family after Pope Francis' plea to Catholics. Question, have you ever heard of Obama bringing any refugee into his house? Who is doing it? Who is doing it? Which other leader has brought refugees and said, you can stay in this part of my home? Which other one? Who is working great wonders for the people? Oh, my friends, so now these Syrians, and most of them are, are, are different Christian. They come from different backgrounds in Christianity, and most are Muslims. Who will they now admire? Who will they now worship? 
It says, oh, we looked at this last week. Are the Muslims now saying, we need to leave Islam and join Roman Catholicism? Watch. What will the undocumented do? Those in America, immigrants, migrants, who will they now begin to revere? As Pope Francis is the only public voice standing up for them, who will they now revere? Now watch this, April 18, 2015, what is our headline here? It says uh, Pope Francis does what? Urges uh, more international action on migrants. Friends, who will the migrants now begin to worship and follow? Pope Francis, uh, the papacy. Is the Pope also working great wonders in the area of morality? So who will the homosexuals begin to worship? Hmm. Now, what about these professed Seventh-day Adventists who are homosexuals and don't see the need of change, that they must be convert? Who will they begin to worship? Wait a minute, wait a minute. If some Seventh-day Adventist church say, you cannot bring the life of sin into this church and hold a church office as a homosexual, I wonder which church will say, come on in? Do you see it now? So who will they begin to worship and adore? It says, watch, Pope Francis. Priests can what? Forgive abortion if what? Women are... Con who will this woman now begin to worship? Who? What about the poor? It says, uh, it says capitalism, the Pope says. Driven by greed is enslaving whom? The poor and what? harming the earth and he goes on he says the unholy dollar pope francis slams tyranny of markets and idolatry of money who is he standing for the poor let's re retract now so will the poor follow the pope yes. homosexuals yes. women yes. immigrants yes. migrants Refugees, the undocumented in America, will they now begin to revere the Pope because of his great wonders? The only one who is standing for us, go with me to Matthew 24. Where are we going to, my friends? Will they begin to revere the Pope? As, you know what? Hold Matthew 24. Go to John chapter 6 with me. Where are we going to, my friends? Beloved, question, did Christ work great wonders on this earth? You're not hearing me. Did Christ work great wonders? Did Christ perform marvelous works in the earth? Listen to me. Now, in some sense, hear me. Are homosexuals being marginalized? Yes. Are the poor being marginalized? Listen, hear me carefully now. That doesn't mean we bring them in. They must change. Would you say amen? Now hear me carefully. Did Christ minister to those who were marginalized of society when he walked this earth? Yeah. Did he, my friends? Yeah. Did he bring them in? Yeah. Was that a great wonder from Christ? The Jews had scorned the Samaritans, but how did Christ treat the Samaritans? Do you see it? And when Christ worked great wonders, when Christ performed miracles to help the people, the only voice standing for the downtrodden and the oppressed, do you know, the people then tried to make Christ king? You said yes. Do you see where we're going now? Yes. You said yes. Where are we going? What point are we going to make now? The people are going to now say, we must make the Pope king. Why? He's working great wonders for us. How close are we, my friend? John chapter 6. Thank you so much. Come, Holy Spirit. Talk to us. John the 6th chapter, verse 14. Are we there? It's, are we there? John 6, 14. Then those men, when they had seen the what? Will miracles be wrought based on chapter 13 of the Revelation, verse 13, verse 14? To cause people to worship falsely. Back to verse 14. Then those men, when they had seen the miracle 
that Jesus did said, this is of a truth, that prophet that should come into the world. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him what? King. What happened? Christ departed again into a mountain himself alone. So now as Pope Francis is now working great wonders standing for the downtrodden so it seems. What does he expect? What is the aim of Pope Francis from the people? He wants them to make him king. Do you see why I say the Pope is an infamous world evangelist? He's slick friends, very cunning. Is it going on now? Listen what this says now. Time magazine, it says uh, preaching. Let's read that. Preaching. Pope Francis's politics may be what? The key to becoming what? President in America. Wait a minute. If his policies become the policies of the United States, who is really then the president? Who is really then the king? You haven't seen anything yet. How many of you have been following the, G, the, 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 the candidates who are running for president? It says on Crux, covering all things Catholic, September 14th, 2015, it says, let's read that. It says, for GOP candidates, it is better to be with the Pope and against him. Do you not see a change has come to America? Go to Matthew 24 with me. Can you imagine, my friends? And most of the Supreme Court justices are what? Roman Catholics. Most of our congressmen and women are what? Roman Catholics. And most of the candidates running for President Aum. Roman Catholics. It doesn't matter. They may take the Bible and say, I do solemnly whatever they say. <laughs> but the mere fact they are devout Roman Catholics, to whom must they give their first homage and allegiance? To the Pope of Rome, my friends. Is he working great wonders? Is he working miracles? Are we here now, my friends, when they are about to make the man king? Through his policies first, the mark of the beast will be enforced, and then he rises to the top of the pile. How close are we? Matthew 24. Where are we going to, my friends? Matthew chapter 24. Look with me at verse 24. Did Christ warn of, of something? You know, my friends, people always say, Pastor, why do you emphasize these things? Well, if you were living in the days of Noah for 120 years, what did Noah preach was coming? A flood was coming. What is coming in these last days? Not a literal flood, my friends. It is the mark of the beast crisis. Oh, beloved, it's time to get ready. What do you say? And Christ warned us, look with me at Matthew 24. Verse 24, are we there? It says, for there shall arise whom? False Christ. And what is the title of the Pope? The Pope calls himself what? The vicar. V-I-C-A-R. The vicar of Christ. And do you know what the Pope just said? I am going to take my authority and place that authority on all the other priests and bishops and cardinals. There shall arise what? False what? Christ. Let's read on. And false what? Prophets. Then it says, and what shall they do? They shall show what, my friends? Great signs and what? Great wonders in so much. Pause right there. Will there be great wonders in, in the last days? To cause the people to worship falsely and make the image to the beast. Great wonders, it says, in so much that if it were possible, they shall what? Deceive the what, my friends? The very elect. Don't forget that. So if we aren't focused on end time Bible prophecy, what may happen to us? We shall be what? Deceived. Verse 25. Christ says, Behold, I have what? Told you before. Where did Christ warn us before? That there shall be 
false prophets in the last days, showing great signs, great wonders. If it were possible, they would deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Where did Christ say those words before? Go with me, Deuteronomy chapter 13. Where are we going to, my friends? Deuteronomy chapter 13. It's right here. Verse number one. Listen, listen, friends. Beloved, if the majority are going to be deceived, and God has been so gracious to call us as, as Seventh-day Adventist believers, Christians, as safe to serve, should we not say, God, give me urgency to educate to warn people so that they may not be deceived. Verse number one, are we there? It says, uh, if there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and give thee a what? A sign or a what? A wonder, great wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying what now? Let us Go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet. Wait a minute, my friends. Thank you, Heavenly Father. So now, are they, does the Bible say, people, leaders, will rise and work great wonders? And the great wonders will be of some benefit for the people. But what will be connected to the great wonders and signs? They will lead you to worship other gods. Is that false worship? Yes. I want to share with you something. Does the Roman Catholic Church have many gods? Yes. Listen, they say, pray to Jesus. And they say, that's not enough. Pray to Mary. And she's not enough. Then pray to all these so-called Statues, the so-called saints. Do you see, my friends? This is where we are. And what is the Pope now saying? Is the solution for all of the world's problems. What it says? What it says? He says, uh, AP News, uh, no work Sundays good for what? Not just for Catholics, but for everybody. CNA says, he says, uh, Pope Francis, Sundays are about a gift from God. Do not ruin it. He says, uh, if there are calamities, environmental issues, what does the world need? To go to church uh, on Sunday, Sunday Mass, uh, and partake of the sacraments, the Eucharist. Is this not? The person right now, primarily, working great wonders and miracles. Listen to me carefully. Jesus says, if it were possible, who shall be deceived? Go to Second Thessalonians chapter 2 with me. Where are we going to? Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Bible tells us the papacy and her prophets, but today just the papacy we are, we are addressing Showeth great wonders, it says, and this will lead people to worship the Pope and to make an image to the papacy. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse number 3. Are we there, my friends? It says, let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Who is the man of sin today? In the secondary sense, Satan is the man of sin. But who is the man of sin in the secondary sense on this earth? The son of perdition, it is the papacy. How do we know that? No, it's right there. How do we know that? Verse 4, right? Ver Amen, my brother in the back. Verse 4 says what? Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is a worship, so that he as God sits in the temple of God, showing himself to be God. So who is this? The papacy. This is popery. But listen now. 
Did Christ say there shall be false Christ, false prophets? Yes. Showing great signs and great wonders? Yes. If it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Do you know why the very elect will not be deceived? Tell me why. Over here, tell me why. Why? All right. Why? All right. Over here, why? Let's read that. Verse 9. It says in verse 9, Even him, are we there? Whose coming is after the working of Satan. Do you see that, my friends? With all what? Power. And what? Signs and what? And lying what, my friends? Wonders. Read on. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they received not the love of the truth that they might be saved for this cause. God shall send them strong delusion. God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned, who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in what? In unrighteousness. Listen now. So while the papacy is working, lying wonders, miracles, why will God send his professed people strong delusion? Why? It's right there. Why? Over here. Why? Because they have not a love for the truth. Wait a minute. It doesn't say because they do not know the truth. You see, friends, so we can profess anything we want to profess. Oh, I, I know truth. But friends, do you have a love for the truth? Because if not, God will send you what? A strong delusion that you will believe a lie that means you look at the pope and call him god and when satan comes as jesus or he personates jesus not fully but partially you will bow down and worship satan as jesus as god he will send us a strong delusion. Why, friends? Two things. It says, verse number 10. Why? We have not the love of the truth. Pause right there. Who is the truth? I am the way. The what, friends? Truth. The love. And Christ says in John 14, 15, what? If you, if you love me, do what? Keep my commandments. So wait a minute. So who, 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 do, who doesn't have the love of the truth? Those who refuse to honor God's ten commandments. So who will God send a strong delusion? So my friends, if we are breaking commandment number ten, if we are covetous and don't change, what will happen to us? If we're lying, if we're stealing, if we are committing adultery, if we are killing, if we disregard health reform, killing our bodies with the food and the drink that we know aren't, aren't supposed to be partaken of, what will happen to us? Christ will send us what? A strong delusion, children, if we are disobeying. Our fathers and our mothers, what will Christ send us? If we are breaking God's seventh day Sabbath, the fourth commandment. I'm going backward. What will God send us, my friends? If we take God's name in vain, his character professing to be a Christian, yet living like devils, what will God send us if we don't change? Number two, bowing down and making people your God, compromising with people. Thou shalt have no other one. God's before me. Putting things and people before Christ. What will Christ send us? Skip on down to verse number 12. It says that they all might be damned who believed. Not the what? 
So why will Christ send us a strong delusion? It says because we believed not the truth, but had what? Pleasure in unrighteousness. What is unrighteousness? Sin. So what then must we ask Christ to give us victory over? What must we overcome in Christ's strength? Sin or else what? He will send us a strong delusion. Revelation 13, go back there with me. Where are we going to, my friends? Father in heaven, my friends, right now, which one of us is preparing ourselves to receive that strong delusion? This see why church is more than just coming and say, I just want to hear the name of Jesus. Many of those who will receive the strong delusion, they know the name of Jesus. You're not hearing me, my friends. But do they have power manifesting Christ's character? Are they accepting present truth? Or are they rejecting truth, present truth? Chapter 13. It's time to examine ourselves, my friends. How many of us want to be saved? Chapter 13. Now, let's see where we are here. Verse number 13. Are we there? Are we there, my friends? Go back to verse 12. It says, Father, pour out your spirit. We pray in Christ's name. Verse 12, it says, let's read what it says. And he exerciseth all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship whom? The first beast whose deadly wound was, uh, how close are we now? Verse 13, and he doeth what? Pause right there. Great wonders. Is that going on right now? So what's next? Read on. What's next now? Ah, oh, my brother. What's next? The fire to come from heaven. And then what happens? The miracles. Then what happens, my friends? The nation makes an image to the papacy. And all those who are unconverted will worship the Pope of Rome. So where are we in the sequence? Great wonders, fire come down from, from heaven, and what's next? Miracles, then the image is formed fully. The image then speaks. Where are we in the sequence? Great wonders. What's next then, my friends? What's next? The fire must fall from heaven. The fire that will fall, do you know it also represents calamities? Oh yes. You said, oh yes. Our, we're in the Bible. Besides 1 Kings 18, that's, that was false worship. The fire, false worship. The fire from heaven. May I finish? <laughs> Amen. The fire from heaven falling also signal calamities. Do you remember in the book of Job? Who brought the fire from heaven and destroyed Job's servants? It was Satan. But who did the people blame for the fire? They said, Job, God sent the fire. So the fire represents what? Calamities. Are calamities increasing? Drought, hurricanes, tsunamis, earthquakes, oh, friends, tornadoes, hailstorms. Oh, my friends, diseases. Are these things increasing? So wait a minute. As these things get worse, and the people are told it's because of homosexuality, immorality, it's because the world is not serving God, and the only way to stop these calamities and to fix the financial crisis, we must all turn to God, which day will they now worship on? Be forced to worship on Sunday. Question now, how many will vote for the Pope? How many will say, yes, Mr. Pope, we will follow your objective. Yes, false prophets in America, we will follow your policies. How many, how close are we? Go to Job chapter 1 with me. Where are we going to, my friends? Beloved, is this thing clear to us? Write down in your notes the great controversy. Write it down. The great controversy. Page 589 and page 590. You read that. Look with me at Job chapter 1. The fire, while it represents false worship, 
589590 of great controversy. The fire from heaven, while it represents, hear me, false worship, it also represents calamities. They are going to increase. Look with me at Job chapter 1. Are we there, my friends? Are we there? Skip on down to verse 12 with me of Job chapter 1. It says, And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that Job hath is in thy power, only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So whom? Satan went from the presence of the Lord. Verse 14. Verse, verse 14 says, are we there? Let's keep on down to verse 16. It says, while he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Job the what? The fire of God is fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. So who was blamed for the fire that destroyed human lives? God, but who brought the fire? So what will happen in these last days? Will fire fall from heaven? Will great severe calamities take place? Who will they blame for it? God. We must turn back to God in honoring Sunday. How close are we? Is the Pope now working great wonders? How close are we? Now listen. Just before the crisis hit, what were Job's children found doing? Do you have children in your home and some have left your home? What were Job's children found doing? Were they lost as a result? It says Job's children were in a separate house, eating, drinking, and getting drunk. And the Bible says, that Satan brought a calamity and destroyed Job's sons and daughters. Why? They were in another house, eating and drinking wine. So what is God saying to us now? What does the house represent in these last days? The house represents, in one sense, the church. Where, where are your children? Where are they? Listen, where are they, friends? They were eating and getting drunk in that church. So what would the wine represent then? False doctrines. And many young people, they are drinking liquor also. You think they have gone to look for their friends? No. They have gone to the parties at someone else's home, drinking liquor, smoking, eating what they know they should not consume. Listen, this is at a time when Satan brought what? You're not getting it. You don't see the context. When Satan was about to bring fire down, and chapter 13 of Revelation, verse 13 says, He doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down. In that context in Job chapter 1, Job's children, they were found unconverted. So now, what is Pope Francis now doing? Great wonders. What is about to take place? The fire is about to come. What is the condition of our children? And what, let's read that, verse number 13. Are we there, my friends? Are we there, my friends? Oh, friends, verse 12 ends by saying, so Satan went forth from God's presence. And verse 13 says, and there was a what? A day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. The eldest brother should have known better. So now, siblings, are you leading your other brother and sister to hell? And verse number 18 says, verse 18 says, While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Job, your whom? 
thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in the eldest brother's house. And behold, Job, their king, a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and they are dead. I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Oh, friends, do you know what God just showed me? If, listen, if the, since the wind came and blew upon the house and the house fell upon what were the children building? On sifting sand. Look at your children. Look at them. They're sitting beside you. So parents, what is God saying to us now? The Pope is coming to America. The meeting is, let's take care of our families. But how can you build up a family without God's standards? God's law. Where are God's people now? Are your children receiving enough opportunities to be saved? Fathers, mothers, stop looking at temporal things. Look at the condition of your children. And one thing was certain. Those children were eating and drinking wine in somebody else's house. Not in Job's house. So what's the application then, friends? What is God saying to us as parents? Proverbs 22, let's quote that. No, 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 we know it. Train up a child. So wait a minute. Should we then blame Job? I want to encourage some parents here. Should we then blame Job because the children were lost? No, no. He did his God-given duty. But they grew up and thought they were grown. And not because the state says when you get to 18, you are, you are still a child. You're not grown. I, I'm going to move out now. Have my own apartment now. You are still a child. And biblically, you must remain in your mother's and father's home until you are married. Then shall the father leave what? Man leave what? Father and mother. And then what? Cleave unto his wife. Don't let me start on that point, my friends. Don't let me start there. But they thought they got to a point wherein they could now make their own choices. And they were building on sifting sand. And Romans 9, 27, 28, 29 says, the sifting sand represents people. That means Job's children were following people. Building on sand, sand, though the number of Israel be as the sand of the sea, sand, people, my friends, negative peer pressure. All who were in that house lost. Look with me at verse number five. No, 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 talk to me, talk to me. What was Job found doing for his children? And listen, hear me carefully. Job did not say, well, they're in the church, so they are okay. Job knew they were unconverted. Parents, <laughs> listen, I want to encourage you. After you have done your best for your grown children, if they begin to sin and commit folly and frivolous things against God, don't beat yourself. You have done your best to what you knew. And if you know you did not do your best, confess your faults to your children. Confess your sins to God. Leave it there. Don't let them give you a heart attack or a stroke. No, don't let them give you sleepless nights. Or loss of appetite. No, my friends. But once you have done that, then what's the next step? Like Job, every
every morning you put their names on the prayer altar. Lord, I know my children are not in a saving relationship with you. If they were to die now, they would die lost, dear God. Have mercy upon my children. Read that, Job chapter 1. And yet as parents, we don't pray for our children. Well, some of you do. Praise God. But listen, it's going to take more than, Lord, just be with my children. No. It's going to take you fasting and praying and let God, let Christ know you mean business. You are willing to fast and pray, abstaining from food and drink so that they can get the next opportunity to be saved. Oh, Lord, save our children. Verse 5, and, and it was so the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up how early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to what? The number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have what? Sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Hold your place on Job. Go to James chapter 5 with me. Don't lose Job. Go to James chapter 5. And my friends, many of us as parents, we can look at our children and we can say, oh, they are in a lost condition. And listen, friends. Not because they come to church, it means they are saved. Do you remember the lost coin? Where was the lost coin? It was lost, we are in the house. In the house. How was it found? By the woman, the, 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 the church, the parents, lighting a candle light in the house, looking until they find that lost coin in the house. Come on, parents. We are giving our children too much rope. Don't let them hang themselves. Once you live in this house, you are going to abide by God's principles. Don't, ex don't say, well, they have to grow up. They, are, they will grow up and live like devils. Don't play games. James chapter 5, are we there? Now, you know this. You know this. I want to re-emphasize this. That Job's experience in past times typifies our experience in these last days. Verse number 10 of James 5, it says, are we there? It's, are we there, my friends? Well, we'll go back to verse 9. It says, grudge not one against another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Behold whom? The judge standeth before the door. Is Christ's second coming even at the doors? The signs show us this. Look here now, friends. It says, verse 10, Take my brethren, the prophets, who have spoken in the name of the Lord. For what? An example, an example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy which endure. You have heard of the patience of Job and have seen the end of the Lord. That the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. So Job's experience typifies whose experience? Our experience. Go back to Job chapter 1. Now talk to me now. I don't want you to miss this point. Please, friends, don't miss it. Before Satan went to bring fire down from heaven, how did Jesus describe the character of Job? You see, when you extract things out of his context, you miss the point. Before Satan brought the fire down, how did God describe the character of Job? Verse 1, talk to me how. He was what? Christ. Now, no, you can't call yourself perfect. Jesus declared Job, what? Perfect, upright, and one who escheweth, one who hates evil. That was done. He was declared this before the fire came down. Satan brought the fire down. Is Satan about to bring fire down? 
Is the Pope now working great wonders? Is the fire about to fall now? Great calamities, even a counterfeit revival. So what must we, what condition must we be found in? Come on, friends. What condition must we now be found in? So late that God may declare us how? Perfect. Upright. One who hates evil. How can we get to the point wherein we hate evil? Talk to me. If you met someone right now, this stirring message, and they look at you and say, well, how can I be brought to the point to hate evil? What would be your response? What now? What in James? James chapter 4 verse 7. Submit yourselves therefore to God. He will give you power to resist the devil. And he will what? Flee from you. Draw nigh unto God. He will what? Draw nigh unto you. That's it, my friends. Draw nigh to him. Let me tell you something. God has never failed me. And he's still working on me. I had and still have some weaknesses. But do you know what I have done every time God showed me my weakness? I bring it to God in prayer, Amen. in fasting. And I say, Lord, show me. Show me your agony over this sin. I know every sin crucifies you afresh. And it's not until we see this sin is what hurts Jesus. This sin crucifies Jesus. Some of you, you must learn to tame the tongue. The tongue is getting you into problems. Unforgiveness, malice. Lord, show me how this sin hurts you. It's by looking to him how we have pierced him. We are told, my friends, we are brought to the point to hate sin. Don't play with it. Don't just say, well, it's my weakness. No, it's sin. It's my shortcoming. You know, we, we aren't perfect. It is sin. And God is calling us to be perfect. But we must see Jesus. He says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto myself. What caused Christ to be lifted up? Sin, who oh sin? So as we see him lifted up because of our sins, what will happen supernaturally? He will draw us unto him. That's it. Now hear me. Talk to me now. Before Satan brought the fire down, hear me, hear me. What did Satan say to Jesus about Job? Mm, 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 mm. The devil had the audacity, the boldness to say, listen, Job is only serving you because you're blessing him. But if you remove the blessing, Job will curse you to your face. Listen to me carefully. Is that coming again? When will it happen? When? You're not talking to me. When will... Uh, oh my... Oh, wait a minute. Was it a great display? All the sons came before God the Father, right? A great meeting. And God said, now, now Satan, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm conquering earth. Well, have you considered Job? Job, listen, Job is only serving you because you're blessing him. Everybody heard it. If you remove the blessing, Job will worship falsely. Job will curse you. That was the great controversy. Is it coming again? Yes. When? When? That means all of us will have to go through it. You won't be able to. 
And the devil is going to test all of us. And Christ will back up as it were. All of us will be tested like Job. We will lose every earthly support. Why? Satan is saying, they come to church on the seventh day Sabbath. They read their Bibles. They sing the songs of Zion because they have a job. They profess to be Christians because they have food on the table. They profess to be Christians because they can pay their mortgage, pay their rent. But let me just take those things away. Is God talking to us now, friends? Then now listen, if we have not been prepared for that crisis, how are we going to stand? How are we going to stand? How are we going to stand? What did Job lose? Everything. Job lost his sh He lost everything. So what will we all lose? Everything. So my friends, is your job guaranteed, a temporal job? Is your business guaranteed on this earth? We are going to lose what? Everything. everything. So wait a minute. That's why we learned in Sabbath school where your treasure is. Do you know how many people say, I'm not going to church today. I don't feel well. <laughs> things aren't right on the job. So what if things aren't right financially with you? So what if things aren't right financially with you? Should that hinder you from praising and serving God? If that's your character, your condition, your mode of operation, you are on ready to die. You are on ready for the coming crisis. And many of us are guilty. Hands on the jaw. Somebody ask you, what's going on? Oh, oh my child, you don't know. Can't pay the bills. Can't pay the bills. And we stop praying, stop studying, stop sharing God's word, and the focus is now on self. You're not ready, friends. You're not ready. You're not ready. He lost his children. He lost his wealth. And yet, what does the Bible say? What did Job say and do? Verse, verse, verse 20. What is the last Let's read verse 20 of Job, uh, Job 1. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and what? Worship saying what now? Naked. And naked will I return thither. The Lord giveth, he gave, and the Lord what? Taketh away. Blessed be what? Don't read that too fast. Blessed be the name. Why the name? Character. That means Job understood to some extent. Listen, why must I turn my back on Jesus? He has always been there for me. Naturally, you would say, if the Lord allow my children to die lost, I don't want to be saved either. No, friends. Do you know how many wives are compromising with husbands? If he won't turn, if, if he won't come to church, neither will I. Foolishness. He worshiped God. It says uh, that Job did not sin with his wife, nor charged God foolishly. How many of you murmured against God this week? How many of you? How many of you? My wife and I were talking about this. Then came Job's wife. I'm closing right here. Then came Job's wife. Did Satan touch the body of Job? Huh. <laughs> Listen to me now. I want you to see the degree of the test. God, Satan took his business took his earthly wealth, took his children, and Satan stood back saying, now watch, he's going to curse God. And Job still what? Praise God. Worship God. And the devil must have said, mm -mm, I got to go deeper now. Do you see it, friends? Yes. The devil will not let up. 
He says, now watch, Lord, skin for skin, yeah? Let me touch his body. And God says, go ahead. Listen, why did God have trust in Job? Did God know, did he know that Job would remain faithful to him? Do you know why, my friends? Listen, what was Job's experience before the crisis? When the crisis came, what was he doing? Praying. And my friends, at the end, what was Job found doing? What's the secret of success? What is the secret of success? So God now could say, Satan, it doesn't matter the depth of the test, Job will stand. What came on Job's body? Did he murmur? Then how many of you are sick right now? Why are you murmuring? Why are you complaining? And listen now, Job's wife, oh my friends, she saw what her husband was going through. She just lost everything, her children, and she turned and looked at Job. She said, what? Doth thou still hold fast your integrity? <laughs> she knew the man was faithful. Praise God. Amen. When your family member know dad is faithful, mama is faithful, brother is faithful, sister is faithful, doth thou hold fast thine integrity? Just curse God and die. Listen to what the Lord showed me. How, oh, my friends. She was the fulfillment of Satan's words. Does Job fear thee for naught? He's only serving you because you're blessing him. Remove the blessing, he will curse you to your face. Who fell? The wife. The wife. What is God saying today, friends? Yes, the weaker flesh. Watch it. Weaker flesh. Wives and mothers, watch it. When the thought of murmuring and complaining come in, say, dear God, cast down every imagination, every high thing that exalted itself against your word. Lord, help me to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Surrender negative thoughts. Don't even utter it. But the wife, a woman, represents the church. The church is going to fail. And listen, she was in whose house? Was the mother, the wife, in the eldest son's house? No, she was in Job's house. So she was in the house where prayer, worship was often made. But when the test came, my brother, She failed. You can be even in the right church where truth is. But if you don't have a personal experience with God, you're going to fail. You're going to fail. Listen to what this says. Job chapter 1. Go back there with me. Is God talking to us, friends? Verse number 10, verse number 9. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Listen carefully now. I'm going to close right here. Has not thou made what? An edge about him. Underscore that. And about his house. Praise God. And about all that he hath on every side. So before the crisis what did God set around Job? His house and everything. And hedge. Was the hedge there? Was it around Job's house? Who was in Job's house? The wife, but she failed. What is God saying to us? Where were the sons and daughters when they were lost? Not in the house where the. Mm -hmm. Do
Do you see, my friends? But now, you know, I couldn't let you go without encouragement. If God set an edge around Job before the crisis, we are nearing the crisis. What can God also set around us? And if God set an edge there, hear me now, who can come through it? What can come through it? Again, nothing. So if somebody breaks through, who allowed him to come through? If a trial comes to the edge, who allowed it to come through? And since God allowed the trial to come, is your power to endure, overcome that trial? You're not hearing me. That's encouragement, my friends. And this is what makes Satan tremble. Listen, keenly. You got ears, listen. Great controversy. It's on your sermon notes. Page 512, 513. Listen. A guardian angel is appointed to every follower of Christ. The heavenly watchers shield the righteous from the power of the wicked one. This Satan himself recognized when he said, Doth Job fear God for naught? Who said, You have set an edge around Job? Satan said that. The Satan know God has set an edge around his people. Yes. Only to those who fear him. It says in closing, thus God's people exposed to the deceptive power and unsleeping malice of the prince of darkness and in conflict with all the forces of evil are assured. Are what, friends? Are assured of the unceasing guardianship of heavenly angels, would you say amen? amen? Nor is such assurance given without need. If God has granted to his children promise of grace and protection, it is because there are mighty agencies of evil to be met. Agencies numerous determined and untiring of whose malignity and power none can safely be ignored, be ignorant or unheeding. What has God set around those who fear him? An edge. But how must we remain? And if something comes to the edge, who allowed it? And if God allowed it, is there power to overcome it? Yes. How do you feel right now? Did you receive the warning today? Yes. Do you see how close we are to the end? Do you see duty? Yes. It's time to go and set our homes in order. Yes. Job's experience. How can I end by saying Job lost how many things? But how did God bless him? At the end, God doubled his blessings. When shall we receive a double blessing? Do you want to see Jesus, my friends? Can you imagine we lose everything down here because we are faithful to him? But when we see Jesus... What glory that shall be. Amen. When we all get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing. That will be. When we all see Jesus. What shall we do? What shall we do? We shall what friends? We shall sing. And shout. What shall we be shouting? Victory by whose grace? By Jesus. Father in heaven, let's kneel, friends.